Hello everybody, welcome to NAP TV. I'm your host, Mike Martin. Special episode today. We have some visitors here from Beijing, China, who are doing a documentary on American school bus transportation. And uh, we're glad to be interacting with them today, sort of serving as unofficial hosts in conjunction with Cliff Birchhold at the Minor Woodbury Central School District. So we're gonna show you some of the things we're doing with them today and uh, you know, hope you enjoy. All right, we, are, uh, we have just arrived at Monroe Woodbury. Uh, we're running just a tad late, uh, believe it or not, but not too late. I think we're still here uh, before our, uh, our friends. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go over and kind of spend the day with these folks. Um, I'm not sure exactly what they want from us, uh, but uh, we'll do our best to accommodate them. I think they're going to do some filming, maybe uh, of some individuals and of some vehicles. Uh, so it should be a really interesting day as we, uh, as we move forward from here. And... Oh, seriously? I just locked the keys in the car. Josh, no joke, I just locked the keys in the car. Oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> not cut. All right, it's not uncommon that people lock their keys in the car. That's why actually, first step, I have a kit that'll unlock most of the cars. Some of them are a little tricky. That's the uh, option A. Option B, usually break a window. Yeah. But a lot of times, as you can see, the keys are right in the front seat. We can either try to grab them with a coat hanger, if they're that easy to see. Or, step B, we usually like to reach through the open window and then lock the door like this. And that usually seems to solve it without any uh, problems. And that's how we uh, get the keys out of the cars, especially for the NIAP people. <laughs> Do 这注定是一个让人感慨并且有兴趣的话题 All right, hello everybody, we're back again. It, I tell you what, it's been a really interesting day today. Uh, we weren't quite sure exactly what to expect when we got here. And I will tell you, there are, are seven or eight folks that are here from CCTV, and, and they're just the nicest people. I mean, they really are. They're, they're working on a number of different documentaries. And we've learned today that they're actually going to be here for 28 days. They're shooting seven different documentaries and seven exclusive interviews. They're going to be talking with people like Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner. They're going to be talking with Kobe Bryant with the LA Lakers. They're going to be talking with uh, the, the chairman of Morgan Stanley. They're going to be talking with the undersecretary of the Department of State. Uh, and folks from Pupil Transportation, go figure. How cool is that, right? Um, it, it's been really interesting. They do not have school transportation in China. So our system is really interesting to them because there's nothing like it there. Um, we went to a high school today. They've got 2,500 kids at this high school, you know, moderately large, at least for, for our area, uh, for New York. Um, they said that a typical high school in Beijing has 7,500 kids, 7,500 kids at their high schools. So it, it's been a really interesting cultural exchange. One of the things we're going to try to do uh, by piecing together some of the footage we've captured today is to give you a little bit of flavor what the day was like today. It's been a long day and you know, huge bags are under my eyes but I'll tell you what it's been fun. Uh, we started in the dark, uh, we're probably going to end the day in the dark uh, and we've been going like crazy in between but I really hope you stay with us and watch what we're going to do today because I think you'll enjoy it. CCTV executive editor Yi Shang wanted some b-roll footage of buses in actual operation. So we went to the Monroe Woodbury Senior High School so we could see 60 buses rolling out of the lot at dismissal time. Play that kid. Hi everybody, I am here from China. I'm uh, doing a documentary here to introduce U.S. school bus transportation system to my audience. And uh, I think every parent uh, cares about their 
kids safety on the road to their school. Uh, since situations is totally different from uh, China to uh, uh, in China to U.S. because we have the huge population and we live not very far away from our school. But I think the thought of Americans have to care about about their children based on every tiny details. So I think this is very vital, and I think this is a. A good reference to my audience. Okay, thank you very much. And they come, come over to the hopefully orderly line, right on out. The driver waits out here in case somebody trips and they might fall and get hurt. So the driver catches it. the 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 as the bus stops, the crossing gate comes out, and then when the yeah. kids wait over here off to the side, the driver gives them the signal, they walk in front of the gate so that the driver can maintain eye contact with them the entire time as they go around. Then when the bus engages again, the gate goes back. The crossing gate comes out, and then when the yeah. kids wait over here off to the side, driver gives them the signal, they walk in front of the gate so the driver can maintain eye contact with the entire time so the bus engages again, they go back. It's not a motor. Okay. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah. It's, it's not a motor. I'll probably, Cliff will probably yell at me now. The animal cage is mounted over here, kind of between both of the frame rails, um, and it is encased with steel support, very thick steel, so that if something hits this, it will not penetrate it, and the fuel will remain intact in the uh, the fuel tank itself, so it isn't likely to catch fire or explode. Um, the fuel cage is also protected by a very thick bumper here in the back. So if something hits the vehicle from behind, this bumper is about 3 16 of an inch steel thick. It also protects the integrity of that fuel. Okay. Great. Is that okay? Yeah. One of the things that's also really important uh, in the design of this vehicle is the height that it's off the road. Um, you'll notice it compared to a normal sized car. Um, this car, if it were to hit the back of this vehicle, first thing it would do would impact this very rigid bumper. So there would be very little give. This car would be, incur much more damage than this bus would. And then you'll see what happens is oftentimes when this hits it, it will sort of go below the floor line of the bus. So the kids are sitting above, generally, the impact zone. So they're not involved really in the accident literally itself. They're protected because they're above the height of the vehicle where it gets the bus. Larger vehicles are a little more problematic uh, simply by virtue of the, the, the height that they sit off the road and actually their volume and mass. Um, generally, however, school buses fare very well in an accident. If you think back to just fundamental physics, you know, usually let, let's talk about wrestling, for example. Usually, the larger, heavier guy is going to be the smaller, lighter person. So what happens is kind of a vehicle in crash is, unless the vehicle is the same size as this bus, even if it is an SUV or a Humvee or something of that nature, a larger uh, vehicle, the school bus is usually going to fare better in that crash. Uh, obviously, uh, those larger vehicles will do more damage than the smaller ones, but a school bus is still uh, built like a tank. It's a very, very sturdy, structurally safe vehicle. 比如说这个从纽约州的这个角度来说，他每个月都来检查，他是抽查呢，还是所有的车辆都要进行检查？They're checking the buses every six months. They have a rotating schedule, so it takes it's quite a it's quite a complicated long inspection. It might take an hour or more per bus. 下午的时间了，我身后的这所中学呢，在隔一会儿就要放学了。提前了一段时间，一百一十辆的校车就已经云集到了这里。他们将把放学的孩子们送回到自己家，送回到他们父母的身边。一天的学习和工作就要结束了。然而，日复一日的这黄色的校车将陪伴着所有孩子成长。
当我们要告别这个话题的时候，你突然会有这种感觉。校车一方面在运送着每一个孩子，另一方面也在运送着温暖和责任。You have to have a lot of patience. First of all, you have to have steady nerves. You have to like children, and you have to like driving. 就是当了这个 school bus 的这个司机之后，也要学很多的这个急救的常识，是吗？ There are many of us here at the bus garage that take the courses and have the training personally just for themselves to feel better, to be better prepared in case anything happens. My great uncle who drove school bus at Minor Woodbury, and I used to tell him, oh, I'm going to drive a bus when I get older, not thinking that I would, and here I am. And there are some bus drivers at the bus garage right now that used to ride my bus, and um, it's it, I love having them there. They're, they're, it's wonderful. I asked one of the girls why she came to drive a bus, and she said because I saw how much fun you were having, and I thought that was a very nice compliment. I've been to weddings of my students. I've been to baby showers. I've been to bridal showers, and. I see the kids all the time, and I see them in the store. They come running up to me and acknowledge me all the time. My husband gets a kick out of that. We'll be in the store and we'll always run into one of my kids, <laughs> and now they're walking around with little children. So now I'm picking up students of students, and now I'm picking up grandchildren of students, and I remember their names too. It's amazing how I can remember their names. I don't know how I do it. Okay, Hi, N A P T V. Everybody, this is my friend Alamos. He went to Temple University yep. a couple of years ago and now works with CCTV. Yep. He's been uh, uh, a great help to me today. Wow. Uh, I don't know how much help I've been to him today, uh, but he's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it's meeting you. Very kind of you. It's been, it's yeah. been my and pleasure. Nice to be here. Yep. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good luck. And say hi to my friends at NAPT. Hi, NAPT. NAPT. I you love got the it. name. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you all. Yeah, good luck. Thank you, okay. sir. Thank you.